In this tutorial, we'll take a brief look at the interface of Form Z. The modeling window is where all the 2D and 3D modeling of your objects take place. The reference plane is a visual aid in assisting you in orientating yourself in 3D space. The cursor automatically tracks on this plane, and this is your default drawing surface. The reference plane icons in the lower left corner control the creation and orientation of these reference planes. Please see additional tutorials for more information on the reference planes. When interfacing with the modeling window, the snapping icons at the bottom control how the cursor snaps to grid lines, guidelines, or parts of objects. Complete details on snapping are available in another tutorial. The modeling tools palette on the left contains all the tools needed to create, edit, transform, and texture your 2D and 3D objects. Move the mouse over the tools and a suite of functionally related tools will be automatically displayed. Keep the cursor over an icon for a moment and a hint will display the full name of the tool. A single click on the tool makes the tool active and ready to be executed. The name of each suite of icons is displayed on the left. If desired, you can tear off the suite of icons by simply clicking and dragging on the title bar. It should be noted that when a tool is selected, all the parameters for that tool are located in the Tool Options palette. For example, if I were to create a stair or perhaps a roof, you can see that all the parameters can be set before and after the generation of that object. Additional help on the selected tool can be found in the Actions palette in the upper left-hand corner. The Active Tools icon is displayed on the left. At the top is the name of the tool followed by a brief description of what the tool does. Below this description are instructions for what happens next. We can customize these tools any way that we want. We can drag these anywhere that we need. And there's also a new tool manager, which lets us customize our toolbars here. So you can see in this top half, I can actually drag and drop these icons anywhere that I want. Actually, I can drag and drop them from anywhere inside the modeling space too. If I want to start a brand new one, I can just click on this button here to create a brand new palette and give it any name that I want, and it's added as a brand new palette. So I can simply go through all my icons and just drag and drop them right onto that new palette. And there's also like dividers that we can add in there, and you can see how easy it is just using the drag and drop type technology to customize any of these toolbars here. Now down here is your favorites panel. So let's see how that works. You can customize that here, just drag and drop and place those icons anywhere that you want. And whenever you hit the space bar, that favorites panel pops up. So it's at your current cursor location, so you can quickly access tools without having to dig into the modeling tools over here. Now, when that favorites panel is open, I can hit any key, any letter, like let's say R, and you'll see that it gives me all the tools that start with R. And so now if I want to find the roof tool, I can click on that. It makes the roof tool active. We also have the concept of workspaces. And so here, here's the workspace palette in the upper right-hand corner here. And you can see that the default is the modeling workspace. So we have all of our 3D modeling tools here. Click on the drafting workspace, and we get just the tools that are used for I'm drafting. So we have all of our dimensioning tools and things like that. If I click on the rendering and animation workspace, then we get all the tools associated with rendering and animating your project. And if you're coming from Bonsai 3D, then you can click on that and you get just the tools that are found inside of Bonsai 3D. When you come back to the modeling workspace, notice that when I click on that, it comes back exactly as it was when we left it. So it, so it remembers your layout in those workspace environments. And one last thing I want to show too is if you right click on any tool, you can set the key shortcut right there. You don't have to dig into any dialogues or anything. Uh, you can right click and choose a manual option to take it to the page of the manual or choose the view video option to watch a short video about that tool. The input palette just below the actions palette displays numeric information when creating, editing, or transforming objects. Additional fields are displayed based on the current operation. For example, if we were to create a vector line, and I click once to begin drawing that vector line, and you can see that the angle and length numeric information is displayed in the input palette. The standard menus are for project-related items, such as opening and saving, importing, project settings, display modes, and help. Often used menu items are also available in tool palettes. For example, new project, open, close, and save, are available both in the menu items and in the tool icons. Numerous settings for your project, such as appearance and working units, can be set by selecting Project Settings from the File menu. This invokes the Project Setting dialog. 
Click on the Appearance tab and you can set your Form Z interface to any one of the predefined configurations, or you can manually adjust the appearance using your own custom settings. Click on the Working Units tab and you can set the numeric options and units, such as metric or English. Many of the menu items have a default key shortcut, which is located to the right. In the Edit pull-down menu, you can create your own custom key shortcuts, and you can also customize the entire interface by choosing the Preferences option. In the Windows pull-down menu, the Multi-View option lets you divide your window into multiple workspaces. This option can also be toggled with the Multi-View icon located in the Navigation palette. In Form Z, you can have multiple projects open at the same time. At the bottom of the Windows menu is a list of all the projects currently open. Select any project and make it the active window. Many standard view types, such as axonometric, perspective, or top or right side views, can be generated by selecting them from the Views pull down menu. These items can also be selected in the Navigational Tool Palette. The Display menu lets you choose different methods of how your scene is rendered in the modeling window. Everything from wireframe to doodle rendering modes can also be selected in the display icons. The wireframe method shows all the lines or edges of objects with no shading of the surfaces. Shaded work is an OpenGL based shaded rendering mode. This is the default display mode and is used when creating and editing objects. Shaded full is also OpenGL based but has additional features to produce a more enhanced view of your model including textures, shadows, and backgrounds. Hidden Line produces a display where only the visible lines of a scene are shown. And the last display mode is Doodle. This is a rendering post-processor that affects line drawings. It produces images with a hand-drawn appearance. Additional parameters for each of these display types can be accessed through the Display Options palette, which is invoked from the Display pull-down menu, or you can hit the F9 key. On the right, we have a list of stacked palettes that are locked together. We can simply drag and drop them into a different order, and they actually snap into the new position. We can collapse or expand each of these palettes, and we can even drag them outside of the stack. If we want to move it back in, just simply drag it back in and it'll snap into the position where we place it. All of the pellets are listed in the pellets pull down menu. They can be turned on and off within the pellets menu, or they can be turned off in the modeling window by simply closing that particular pellet. And the pellets can also be locked together. For example, if I were to move the tool options and maybe the navigation pellet, you can see that they actually lock together inside of the interface. And this concludes the basic interface video tutorial.